Hello everyone, welcome to the worst album ever made, the show where we try to figure out what is the worst album ever made. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about music structure and how music evolves over the years. And what could be perceived as bad then could be potentially elevated and respected now. But before that, we're going to have a conversation. This right here is a picture of Danny DeVito. So we're going to say that Danny DeVito over here represents good music that was made at a certain point. Where every single person in the world says that this is exactly what good music is. And as close as you get to Danny DeVito, this picture, the better you have to become recognizable and very successful as a musician at this time. The reason most music is bad is because it doesn't really go with what we think good music should be. And they just do something that's so weird and so different, we just don't like it. Now taking this into consideration, uh, we can use this to talk about why each one of these are bad. Like say, back fat over here. Back fat's bad because it's poor quality. The basic structure is there. You can tell that it is music, but the foreground is all messed up and uh, the whole thing is just low quality. The Shags is a very juvenile approach to how you put all the pieces together. Um, and it just doesn't really work out and you can tell that nothing is exactly where it should be. And then you have Lou Reed's Metal Machine Music, which just takes all humanity out, and it's just a jumbled mess of what music could be. Now, taking all of that into consideration, what is what we're talking about today structured like? This is my teenage dream ended by Farrah Abraham. Stand by then, out the wind, stick like a for those who do not know, Farrah Abraham is teen mom who got her start on 16 and pregnant. She is extremely famous for being knocked up in high school and nothing else. Because of Farrah's very waning popularity at the time, she decided to do what most celebrities do and she wrote a book. Uh, about her life story, trying to cash in on her last dying remnants of fame. Uh, and when she did it, she did something very odd to go with the book. She decided to make a promotional CD that correlated with the book. And it was very weird. And no one liked it. This album was extremely panned by critics at the time. The site Jezebel said, and I quote, this is the most horrible combination of sounds to ever be assembled in the history of audio recording. While Farah may have kept her baby, the song should have been aborted. Damn. Now, the conversation should have just ended right there. Uh, and Farah Abraham's album would have just been stuck in the weird cosmos of music time, where it would just sit there and just settle like thousands and thousands of other artists before her. But it didn't stop there. The world of music keeps changing, and things that sounded really bad years ago starts to seem better over time. Uh, and that's what happened with this work. This album has been praised by Pitchfork, and Anthony Fantano, Melon Man himself, have all praised this album for being extremely ahead of its time and doing stuff that no one else was doing. So without further ado, let's talk about it. All right, here we go. The first song is called The Phone Call That Changed My Life. Cut off oxygen to my brain. Notice something, notice something, chumps. This, this whole album is very heavily auto-tuned. And that was because the person who was making the music for Farah wanted to make her sound a little bit more edgier uh, because the current beats at the time was dubstep and they copied dubstep so poorly it did its own thing entirely. And it sounds like the music was put through a shredder and then all the pieces were taped back where they should have been. <laughs> Laughter, 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 laughter. 
because when you first hear it, it's very violent, you get a guttural reaction, but you will get used to it the more times you hear it. Um, and getting used to it, you, you start to look past the first visceral reaction and just focus on the entire music as a whole. And the music in the background, while it's weirdly structured, does sound pretty good. This song is about the phone call saying that she's pregnant. It is about the absolute fear that she had. And overall, things went really well for her, but she had no idea at the time. She was very scared and terrified uh, about what's going to happen to her and her whole life is completely different now. And you can feel that anxiety, and you can feel that rage of what she did to herself and how she was beat up about it. Um, and you that will be a going through theme in this whole album. If I was in a club and I was raging and this song came on, guess what? That's a fresh hip new sound. And I'm going to take my big long blonde hair and just wild out. But, I'm in quarantine right now, so I can't do that, so this is getting a 2.5 from me. <laughs> but, from a kind of low point to going a little bit higher, we're talking about after prom now. One of the weirdest choices in this album, but it works, and I it, it's so weird that it does, is instead of a chorus in the song, the chorus is nothing but a very silent shh, 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 shh. Don't tell, don't tell, don't tell, don't tell. Shh, don't tell, 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 and he, he was like, it's like a thousand eyes just open up and stare directly at you. And it just fills him with so much anxiety and that raw emotion. And then the rest of the whole thing goes back to a party jam. But still, it's like, don't care about the choices you choose. Get Live life, get ready for it. It sounds like it's a satire against everything. And it just fills you up with dread and emotional fear and anxiety. It's great. It's great. 4.5! So what is after, after prom? Caught in the act! The guy who did the music was doing background, like, editing stuff for several different shows, and it shows. <laughs> This sounds exactly like reality TV in the background, and that's to this track's detriment, in my opinion. It just sounds a little bit too generic, like you just click some stock music and just went, yep, that's the song. The lyrics in this entire album are just absurd, and they, f they feel like they were poorly translated from Korean. Blind. Rhyming is just not a thing. Rhyming doesn't exist in My Teenage Dream Has Ended. Just throw a dartboard at some words that kind of sound like it if you're drunk. My parents are asleep. Snake, snake. I'm going to say Caught in the Act is, is very similar to the first track, where it's not good and it's not bad, it's just it's just interesting. I'm giving this one a 2.5. This next song is good. This next song is really good, and it really pains me that she did it by accident, so I can't hear more good music from this woman. This is Without His Ring. <laughs> least putting a little bit more effort and she's very sad because this is a song about her ex that died in a car wreck and everything that's happened to Farah he has not been a part of he, she had to raise this child by herself she was going through all this teen mom stuff pretty much by herself and she's rich but according to the song she would give that all up 
for this guy and absolutely cares. Like, because the auto-tune voice is here, it elevates it. Because it just sounds like she's breaking down while she's singing. It, you can feel more pain in her voice because the, the voice is so strained and just put together. The bass buildup is something that can actually bring you to tears. Just from the raw emotion it will give you. So, all of that considered, I'm giving this my 5 star rating. Next song, guess what guys, it's good too. I feel like I'm in Farrah Abraham's official fan club right now. It's not true. Don't really care for the woman, but she made some bangers. This next song is called Liar Liar. We're fighting, we're fighting not. We're fighting, we're fighting not. And it just keeps repeating like crazy. And the first time I heard it, I was so mad. I was like, how do you call this music? This is so lazy. But each time I heard it, I was blown away. And when I hear it now, I'm like, that's, that's good. <laughs> That's that th that's changing the game. <laughs> the never true words that you would say, you never won. We're fighting, we're fighting not. We're fighting, we're fighting not. It's not on the same level of without his ring, but it's still very good. So I'm giving this one a four. Next one is a little bit harder to to deal with though. This is Unplanned Parenthood. Replace the formula and diapers with hearts and hearts. This bump doesn't go away. Unplanned Parenthood is just about get, getting ready and getting ready to have the child um, that she doesn't want. She's like, I gotta change everything. I gotta change everything right now for this baby. And they, the whole song gives you that sense of just like anger and gives you the sense of like, yeah, I hate this. I hate what I'm having to go through. Just say goodbye to the drugs and the drinking. Now, if you're into this sort of music, that is completely fine. And I still, the whole rest of the album, there's a lot more good than bad in it. But this is the one where I'm just like, personally, I just don't vibe with this song. Right now, as it sits, I'm giving it a three. Next up is searching for closure. This whole song's backing is a heartbeat. Cause guess what? Baby's born, baby's got a heartbeat. I hate how they've acted. Disrespect, lies and fakeness. Farrah has some highs, she has some lows, and she but mostly her lows are more in the middle ground. It's not that bad, and I can totally see other people really liking this song too. It's just at this point in the album. Uh, Ferris starts to overstay her welcome a little bit. This song, I'm giving it a 3.5. Next song, Here We Go, It's On My Own, which is another song, guess what, about Farrah being a single mother. I'm swinging on little one's hand, I'm the push behind the swing. Just has very interesting, odd choices for how it goes. Like, verses will just end. When you're expecting the chorus to come in, it just doesn't happen and the verse goes a little bit too further along than it should. Trying to keep it together, there's so many spaces to fill. And when I'm overwhelmed, overworked, underfed. I like it, and, and the, the, the chorus is pretty freaking cool too. This bops. So I'm gonna give it to Farah. This is a good song. On my own. You get a four. Now, we've been having fun in this Farrah fun house for a little bit, but guess what? This next song is just ruining all the fun. This this next song, I hate it. I hate it so much. And this is the only truly bad song on the album. Um, so one that I just absolutely despise, and I'm just like, I, this is bad, this is fucking atrocious. 
It's called The Sunshine State. A party song sent through hell. There's car short, high hills, makes men go loco. Go, go, go. No, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I will have my I'll have my food to go, please. <laughs> this one gets a one. <laughs> it gets a strong one. Last one is a very triumphant song. It's called Finally Getting Up From Rock Bottom. Has a great beat that is very prevalent. And it's a very strong, it's a powerhouse song that's like, yes, I did this and you all will have to notice me now because after all that stuff I went through, guess what? I'm Faber Abraham. I'm Teen Mom! I will say that this is a very good, very good cap to the whole album. It's just a very good thing, just saying, yes, you went through everything, and you know what? Let's freaking party. Let's head bang, boy. I, I like this song. I, I think it's very good. Because I'm like, you know what? I feel good after hearing that. And I didn't say that the first time. I hated it the first time. But now that I've listened to it a very good amount, I, I gotta say, it's not that bad. 3.5 stars for the header. So, this begs the question. Is my teenage dream ended worthy of being on the board of shame? Now this was a very hard decision to make. Because there are some absolutely good songs on this album. But they are not intentionally meant to sound the way they do. They sound the way they do because this whole thing is a happy accident. And that is why it's still going on the board. This might not be a very popular decision because I think artist intent has to be taken into consideration. When Back Fat made Step Inside My Head, he wanted to make an album that sounded like this. Lou Reed, Metal Machine Music, he wanted to make an album that sounded like that. Farrah Abraham was trying to do everything everyone else was doing and did it so poorly that it sounded completely different and like an entirely different genre of music. And that's why I'm putting Farrah on the list. I don't know if she's going to last there too long. She probably won't. But right now as it stands, even though I like tracks on here, Farrah is just... It's worse than back fat. Going back to our topic about structure and Danny DeVito. Anybody, anybody, could just do the exact same thing as everyone else. And you know what that makes them? Generic, boring, and forgettable. I will never forget about Lou Reed, The Shags, or Farrah Abraham, Back Fat, or Captain Beefheart, because these people push the boundaries. They are so memorable because of the fact that they do everything different. They do not just do exactly what you expect, because if they did, guess what? They are nothing in the grand scheme of things. These people challenge what music is, and that's why they should be celebrated. Bad music strengthens our culture and makes us more susceptible to true art. This album was suggested to me on my last episode. So, please suggest all your bad music in the comments below. I had no idea who Farrah Abraham was before I released my last video on Lou Reed. This was a suggestion in the comments, and I'm very grateful for them because I had no idea who this girl was. So please, absolutely, leave your 
suggestions in the comments below because I am reading them and I want to know more. I truly want to know what the worst album ever made is. So, do it, I'll be eternally grateful. Goodbye.